GmbH, or GmbH, are a Berlin-based brand known for remixing club culture aesthetics, reclaimed dead stock textiles, and cross-cultural references. Ahead of their Autumn into 22 show, we asked designers Benjamin and Serhat to comment on the collection's five key focuses. I mean, I feel like this this collection contains a lot of what we've been working on in the past years, from from silhouette to reclaiming materials to the club kids to the Muslim kid. It's it's kind of it's kind of like an accumulation of all these references. I mean, I think when we started out, there was very much we wanted to do a very lot of beautiful soft tailoring. We wanted to bring in some couture inspirations, you know, a lot of this kind of mid-century couture. That or rather we're, continue the that, couture Yeah, that we've been inspired by. And then we kind of put that together. We And with the kind of religious elements, we felt like we needed still to subvert it more. So we kind of added this element of skin, which makes something that could be very formal and very uh, almost conservative, suddenly very subversive. This is very much in the kind of line of our, you know, what we kind of been naming demi couture uh, as a kind of part of Gmbh's language, uh, and it's very much, you know, exploration of trying to create new silhouettes, but inspired by both historical research and kind of just our own kind mm-hmm. of work in the studio. <clears throat> I think this collection also deals a lot with kind of a research on different silhouettes that could work for men. And um, especially in the in the Demi Couture range, we've explored um, more silhouettes than we did in the last winter collection as well. As you can see, there's a lot of like trouserless looks with just like thigh high boots. The no trousers makes basically the cuff downs into dresses or mini dresses. So it's also kind of plays with this idea of like how gender and clothes are kind of... But also like queerness in terms of, you know, how a garment that has this heavy kind of DNA can become kind of like a mini dress, you know, that's... It runs throughout the entire collection where you suddenly see skin where you didn't expect skin. Something almost seedy, you know, like it's just... Like a flasher, (laughs) like something a bit kinky. These ones specifically in black and white, they obviously kind of like hint on uh, spats and galoshes, you know, in the way, you know, so it's uh, it's very much this super formal and also the colors. I mean, there's like, there's all these hints of aristocracy and bourgeoisie in a way, like which are so kind of far away from our lives in so many ways. And I think that's kind of what we are attracted to. They also get these details of like distortion as well. So there's a, there's a disruption in the classic shape of the shoe, how you would kind of generally perceive it as a, a classic dress shoe. And then it combined with a mini cuff down, it just becomes something very, very kinky suddenly. And, but also very real. I think I see a lot of our friends and kids actually wearing these silhouettes. I think the bravery is there these days and it's it's not so outrageous. The jewelry is done by Nyat Wu Dang. He's a, uh, someone we've been collaborating with for the two previous collections as well. And this, this uh, And they're also all basically reclaimed from old jewelry actually. Yeah, some of parts of it are cast and some of it is the stones are set. So it's a mixture of his work and uh, combined it's with vintage jewelry. The pearls also play with the idea of like, you know, religion as well. And praying beads. There's like praying there's, beads. We have some um, rings, that, rings with like on his right hand with beads. had two kind of major inspirations for it and one was an an historical ottoman uh, armor that had these like hand painted silk robes uh, underneath the armor so it's kind of undergarments so this sort of superstition mixed with religion and culture it's not necessarily something that's practiced everywhere but it's just something that we have obviously sarah has this personal connection every muslim child kind of grows up with uh voluntarily or involuntarily when you're muslim you have to learn arabic to be able to practice islam since you can't practice islam in any other language 
And uh, my grandfather actually used to be the, in the village, the person who would write these scriptures for people for protection. And these would be worn like under garments or under uniforms for protection against the evil eye or uh, anything bad, basically. That's digital on silk. The artwork itself is handwritten. It's, yeah, it's, it's by a calligrapher. Yeah, it's a Syrian artist who did the calligraphy. And then it's been scanned, the artwork, and yeah. Yeah, translated. We wrote a text that's in it, so the safe from harm came from us. And then the other words say things like knowledge and spirituality and growth and wisdom. So it's kind of having this like spiritual but non-religious specific kind of connotations. A lot of people also connect fear to anything that appears Muslim or brown. So it, it obviously also plays with that a little bit. And we've always been quite forward with our backgrounds and anything that is kind of, you know, relates to the demonization of Islam and, and, and the people around it. <laughs>